Hi guys, my name is Amy and today I'm going to share with you how I take care of my string of hearts plant. Chain of hearts. This beauty who is very, very, very long and I can't even get it all in frame is a very popular house plant and for good reasons. It's absolutely gorgeous. That's probably the main reason. I'm like turning it to look at me. Hey girl. It's absolutely beautiful. The little heart shaped leaves are super cute. It comes in the standard version, which is Serapegia linearis woodii or Serapegia linearis woodii variegata. So that is a variegated version. That's like pink with bits of white on it as well. And it's abs they're, they're just all gorgeous. They are so easy to care for and they're really quite a great statement plant for your collection. So for a soil mix, you want a super light, airy and well draining mix for this plant. You want it to drain well because this plant does not enjoy being wet for too long. It's kind of like a succulent because it has thicker leaves that hold on to a bit more water. So it doesn't like to have wet feet, as they say. You can check out my soil mix video for the typical soil mix that I use for most of my house plants. I would add a little bit more perlite to that mix to create the mix that I would use for this plant. In terms of water, overwatering can be a problem with this plant. So again, you want your soil mix to help you out with that by being more well draining and more aerated. But in terms of water, it doesn't need that much water. I water this maybe every 10 days to two weeks, depending on humidity levels and the type of weather that we're having at the moment. But generally, I won't water it until the leaves start to feel a little bit soft. So this plant is very vocal when it needs water, which helps greatly in being able to care for it. So pay attention to the leaves. In terms of light, this plant does prefer higher light in the home, but I wouldn't say like super high, but I do find that it does tend to get a little bit leggy as in where the leaves grow on the stem is quite further apart and the internode spacing is much longer when you give it less light. On top of that, the leaves don't tend to get as dark. So when the leaves come in, they're kind of bright green. And if you don't give it enough light, they won't turn into the darker leaves. So that is quite important for light. Also to note that you do want to have good top down lighting on the pot or you're going to be very bald up here, but that's up to preference. If you're finding that the plant is growing super slow for you and you've got everything else down, move it to a higher light position and it might grow faster for you because this is a very fast grower in its natural environment. In terms of pests, I've never experienced any pests on this, which is what makes it such a joy to take care of. So I don't think there's any pest issues generally with this plant. Maybe some mealybugs, but I've never experienced them myself. I will say that this plant propagates super easily. Now there's a number of different ways that you can do it. You can simply cut the stem, you can cut around each node and put them in a propagation box or something like that. Let me know if you want a full video on how to propagate this plant, but it does root super easily, especially if you give it good light and humidity while it's propagating. This plant also flowers and their flowers are very interesting looking. I've mentioned before in another video that they do kind of look like phallic flowers but um they're absolutely gorgeous and i love seeing them it's june now here when i'm filming this and it's just started to bloom so i'll insert some footage of that here so you can see what it looks like it also flowers profusely for me like almost every node ends up getting a flower so it's super rewarding to see i do fertilize this plant maybe every two weeks during the summer months as it grows so much for me that generally means that i'm fertilizing every time that i water the plant now, because of that, I do dilute my fertilizer down quite a lot. If you're using a synthetic fertilizer, you want to dilute to maybe half of the strength that they advise to on the bottle. But I use organic fertilizer, so I tend that I don't have to do that as much or pay that much attention to how much I'm diluting it. But I do make it very dilute because it is every time that I water the plant. Let me know what your care tips are for caring for this little beauty. Let me know if you're gonna pick one up after this video because now you know how to care for it. Um, this is one of my favorite plants in my collection and it gives me consistent joy. So I hope that you get the same joy out of caring for this plant. If you like the video, please give it a like. If you enjoy my kind of videos, give me a subscribe because that super helps me out and I will see you in the next one. Bye.